<laughs> oh, honey. Jeez. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey guys, welcome back. So today's episode is all about toe stubbing. Specifically why we get that delayed pain. So we've stubbed our toe and it's almost like this slow-mo experience where we're just waiting for the pain to arrive. So by the end of this video, you should be a toe stubbing expert and really understand not only how we get the delayed pain, but also how do we experience pain in the first place and what are the pain pathways in our body. Also, for context, I did a Bachelor of Science degree at Melbourne Uni, um, where I majored in physiology and also minored, technically minored, in neuroscience. So you know that I'm not just pulling this information out of my butt, because this is actually what we learned. Cool, let's begin. So long story short, for you guys who've already got some scientific knowledge, so the nerve fibers running from our spinal cord to our brain, there's actually two of them. So this one is called the A delta fiber, which may be triggering some of you right now, or the C fiber. And C fiber is um, unmyelinated, whereas A fiber's got some myelination going on. So if you guessed right, A delta fiber is actually faster. It's quicker and it'll reach your brain, oh God, your mushy brain a lot quicker than your C fiber. A delta fiber is that sharp pain that you feel, whereas the C fiber is slower and it creates a dull, achy pain. And that's basically it. So if you just wanted to know that, then you got your answer. But for you guys out there who have literally no heckin' clue what I just said, then keep watching. So let's start with the question, how do we actually experience pain? How do we know that we're in pain? So let's say that you've stubbed your toe hard onto something and it bloody hurts. So you've got your one, two, three, four, four, your foot, and you have damaged your toe. What you've actually done is ruptured and damaged some cells in your toe. And what actually picks up on that are your nociceptors. Your nociceptors are the sensory receptors that when you damage your toe cells goes, oh crap, okay, you've damaged them. Let me tell the brain to be consciously aware that we've damaged your foot or your toe specifically. So once your nociceptors are activated, they will go to your spinal cord and then send a message to your brain to say that you are in pain because the activation of the nociceptors will tell your brain that you are in pain. Okay, so now just find a wall, find a random wall and lightly stub your toe on the wall. It shouldn't feel painful. Unless if you're going real ham. So why is that? Why if we just lightly touch our toe onto the wall, does it not hurt? Well, the fact is that you are not activating your nociceptors. There is not enough stimulus to activate your nociceptors and therefore no pain will be translated to our brain. Instead, instead, we actually have activated what we call mechanoreceptors. They're the receptors, also sensory receptors, that pick up when there is pressure or touch, but nothing that's noxious. Noxious means painful. When the stimulus is light, we have mechanoreceptors. When we have abrasive, hardcore toe stubbing, that's when we activate our nociceptors. So let's take the example of a high five. So sometimes when you do a high five, it's pretty piss weak and none of you are in pain, it's all good and you go off and enjoy your life. But there are also times, and I know you've experienced this, where when you do a high five, you are both on the ground or clutching your hand or something in pain. So a quick quiz, what sensory receptor causes the right image? Drum roll. <laughs> your nociceptor. Okay, so now we've stubbed our toe and we have activated the nociceptor in our toe. So we'll just call that N. This is the lovely, lovely drawing of your body. Here, it will actually reach your spinal cord where it will have two pathways now. So one pathway is called the reflex pathway. And so a message will be sent back down to your leg to pull your leg away. I'll explain more about that. The second one, the second pathway, will actually go towards your brain here to tell you consciously, I am in pain. 
So let's first talk about the reflex pathway. So I like to explain reflexes through the analogy of a relay race. So imagine that you're the nociceptor and your stimulus is toe stubbing, so similar to the gun going off. So you start running to the next person who's in the spinal cord. You'll give the baton to them, the baton meaning the message of pain, and they will give that message to a third person who will take that message directly to your leg muscles or whatever muscles are needed to pull your leg and foot away. So I've basically drawn this out to clarify the information. Um, you've got your first relay racer who is your nociceptor. They will go to your spinal cord where they will meet the second relay racer. They, the second person will give the baton or the message to the third relay racer who will go directly to your leg muscles to get your leg away from the wall or the dangerous stimulus. It's all about survival and basically getting yourself out of shitty situations so you can live another day. Okay, so the second pathway, and this is a pathway to the brain, which I mentioned at the start of this video. So imagine that your nociceptor is going to your spinal cord here. It can do the reflex stuff, which we've mentioned, but it can also go this way too. So if you remember, we have two, two nerve fibers that go from our spinal cord to our brain. We have the A delta fiber, and then we have the C fiber. So let's imagine that A and C fibers are people running together. A delta fiber is the one that's just running super fast and getting to where they need to go. Whereas the C fiber is just running and enjoying the scenic route. So the A delta fiber is the quicker one. It will reach your brain sooner and deliver the sharp pain that you experience when you immediately stub your toe. And the C fiber is slower. It's going to reach your brain slower and it's going to give that characteristic dull, achy pain. And then what's interesting is that once it reaches your brain, it doesn't just stop there. You experience frustration. You're actually frustrated at the point where you're like, God damn it, I stubbed my toe again or something like that. So when you have those emotions, it's actually going to places like your limbic structures where you process emotions. Also an interesting fact is that our minds are super powerful. So we can actually amplify the pain that we experience even if they have the same stimulus. So take the example where you're not even hungry, but suddenly you think of KFC. Your mouth will actually start to drool. Like you will, you will actively salivate and like wipe your mouth or whatever it is because just the thought of KFC activates these physiological symptoms. So same for things like nociceptors. If you're thinking of something scary, something that may usually only activate mechanoreceptors might actually activate your nociceptors. Anyway, our brain is super cool and there is so much complicated stuff with our bodies and we basically just scratched the surface about pain and about how we get delayed pain because of the C fiber and it being slower. So to summarize, when we stub our toe onto something, we are damaging the toe cells and that will activate your nociceptors, your pain receptors. They will send a message to your spinal cord where there are two pathways. One is the reflex pathway, where it will go back down to your legs, pull your leg away, and get you the hell out of there. Second pathway is this pathway, where there will be two nerve fibers that go directly to your brain that notify you consciously that you are in pain. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you understand more about pain and how we get delayed pain. And yeah, if you have any other suggestions or topics you want to know more about, then definitely comment below. Okay, see you later.